Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 12. In this tutorial we are going to link pretty much everything we've done together and allow ourselves to go through our little sequence and start our game um, in a timely manner we should say. Don't forget click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, there's a couple of more things that I want to do throughout this sequence. When we have tapped our screen, or in this case clicked, to begin playing the game, I kind of want to have uh, a 3, 2, 1 countdown, and then the game begins. So to do that, we're just going to have the whole uh, 3, 2, 1 appear on screen. So game object, UI, and let's go to text. And straight in the middle there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this dead center stretched and zero 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 to uh, get everything centered perfectly and then let's align it center and center and let's just put the number three and i'm going to have this as completely in fact i'll have this as white simply because the background is quite dark so we'll have this as white and let's increase the font size to let's say 40. Now we're not going to be able to see anything right now, but that doesn't really matter too much. Let's rename this to count down. And I'm going to hide it, or rather turn it off up here. So let's carry on with the script to get everything uh, going in order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a game object, UI, and button. And this button is once again going to be stretched across the entire uh, canvas so make sure we have stretch and then zero everything out here and then in the button itself let's go to text and delete the text just so it's completely uh, blank and on the button let's go to color and let's have that color alpha as zero that means we can see straight through the button so if we press play now we should still be able to see everything and that button does still exist. So just for a little bit more on that, let's have our button um, as maybe 150 on the alpha and we should be able to see what it looks like. So you can see that I am able to click it there. So I kind of like that effect. So I might actually leave the button as 150 for now on the alpha. But let's carry this on. So this button is going to be what determines us tapping that screen to play the game. So let's rename that button to tap button. So let's head to our script, which is OCM begins. Let's open that up in Visual Studio. So I am going to also add to the variables. Um, I can remember what I've just put in the countdown and let's also add the tap button in there as well so public game object count down text and then public game object tap button semicolon and we are going to use some UI elements in this so we do need to add in using unity engine dot UI semicolon so what do we do now? All we need to do is do something similar to what we've done before with when we catch our orbs. We need to create an extra function or rather extra method to assign to that button. So let's have public void tap to start, open close bracket, open curly bracket. So when we tap it, what do we want to happen? First things first, we want the button to actually disappear because we don't want to be able to keep um, activating it. So we'll say tap button equals oh, dot set active false semicolon. At next, we want the splash background to fade out. So splash background dot get component spiky brackets animator. And up close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of the animation that we created a last tutorial which is called uh, splash fade out so I'm going to copy the name of that file rather than type it just so there's no typos there 
semicolon. So that will now fade into our game. So we now need to work with a coroutine in the game because the next section requires timing to actually get working correctly. So let's have start coroutine and in brackets, let's call this something relevant. We'll just have start game. Open close bracket, close bracket semicolon. So now let's create that coroutine for startup game. I enumerator start game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And we're going to wait for, um, I think it's going to be a second because that's how long our fade out takes. So yield return, if I can spell return right, return new, wait for seconds, one. So after that second, we now want to turn on our countdown text. So countdown text dot set active true. And that's by default going to say three. So after we've turned it on, we want to wait for another second. And you can see here how the sequence of events is working. You can see us going through the sequence here. So next thing we need to do is we need to change what countdown text says to two instead of three. So countdown text dot get component spiky brackets text because we're changing that text component and then changing the text subcomponent dot text equals two semicolon and then I'm going to copy those two lines of code and now change that to one so it starts at three and comes on Wait a second, changes to two. Wait a second, changes to one. And then after one more second, I'm not going to have it say zero. I'm going to um, basically, I'm going to reset it back to three and then turn it off. So let's have set as three after we have turned it off. So countdown text dot set active false semicolon and now what we're going to want to do is turn off a couple of things so we're going to want to turn off um have we turned off the main logo anywhere yes so we turn the main logo off uh, the menu text is still on currently so we do need to change those so let's copy those two there so we're going to have them in tap to start so the tap button is off and we also want those two menu texts set as false right there. So they go off. And we also need the background music to come on when we start the game. So that is down as BGM. So BGM dot set active true. And now we also need to set on within our, um, gosh, where is it? global scripts, we need to set the timer on and the orb generate script on. So global scripts dot get component spiky brackets timer open close bracket dot enabled equals true. Same again global scripts dot get component in spiky brackets um, I think was it orb orb generate that is the right one isn't it what oh, it is orb generate oh close bracket dot enabled equals true semicolon so this sequence now has got everything turned on and i'm going to test it out uh, but we may need to change it a little bit more so let's have tap button um turned off so let's also because we don't want that on when our splash screen starts so we only want it to come on at the same time as this menu text. So then we can say tap button dot set active true semicolon. I'm, I'm going to save the script now and let's give this a test to see how it turns out. Now, sequence of events can be quite um, not difficult, but as long as you know the order of what you're doing. I mean, this script is probably the biggest one we've written so far. Um, but it does everything we need to do in that correct sequence.
So let's go to our global scripts, make sure everything is in. So countdown text, let's add into there. Tap button, let's also add into there. I'm going to save my scene and let's press play and see how this works out. So far, so good. Oh, of course, we haven't assigned anything to the button, have we? So tap button. <laughs> Did I do that last time we created a button? I can't remember. So uh, in the inspector panel, we just need to add global scripts over there. No function, OCM begins, and it is tap to start. Okay, so now we have set the button as its actual function. So fingers crossed, this should work. Ah, okay. So what has happened there? What happened? So did we do things right? Ah, okay. So yeah, we have, so we did the wrong one. I'm thinking we should probably change this uh, coroutine. So begin the game and also change this coroutine to begin the game and save. So because they were very similar, those coroutines in terms of name, I've obviously got them confused with each other. So that's probably why that's happened. In fact, that is why that has happened. So fingers crossed now. Let's give this a go and test everything out. So we should be able to tap anywhere to begin. Two, one. And there we go. So we can see now something is blocking us from actually doing this. And I believe it is the splash background. So that means that we are going to have to turn off the splash background after we start the background music. So splash background dot set active and in brackets false semicolon and save and let's try this once again and see how this turns out you'll find you end up doing a lot of testing when it comes to this kind of thing two one excellent Everything does appear to be working as intended. I'm just not very good. It's much easier with uh, <laughs> tapping the screen. So everything there is now working quite well. I'm quite happy with how that is going. Um, so next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to do the sequence of events after a game has ended. So when it ends, what I'm thinking we should do is when it gets to zero, Everything just stops and it starts fading into white again and tells us our score and then probably some buttons to try again, I guess. And uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.